In this video, I'm going to run through what we know so far about Project Wolverine, which is Google's over-the-counter hearing device that they're currently working on. I'll also talk about what that means for you as a hearing aid user and the potential of where we'll be in a few years to come, and also what's potentially going to happen to the world of audiology and hearing aids as a whole. My name is Matthew Allsop and I'm all about helping hearing aid users and audiologists get the best out of today's technology. So if you're interested in hearing as best as possible, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the notifications bell, and you'll be updated every time I release a new video. Google's X division work on big, out there breakthrough projects. To name a few, smart glasses, autonomous drones, and a shed load of other innovative and exciting ideas. For Google to even consider being able to get involved with hearing devices, we need to rewind back to 2017. Up until this point, there were six international researchers and laboratories that make and produce hearing devices. William Demont, Savantos, Sonova, GN, Starkey, and Widex. These companies control about 98% of the world hearing aid market, and to be fitted one of those hearing aids, there's a traditional route of having to either go to your GP or to an audiologist. They'll organize a hearing assessment, they'll look at you holistically, so they'll look at your hearing test results and the challenges and difficulties that you face on a daily basis, and then recommend the most appropriate hearing aids to fit your needs. They'll also look at any red flags, so if there are any causes for concern, it'll be a referral back to another medical professional in terms of being able to make sure that that's looked into and covered. Back in 2017, over in the States, Congress passed the Over-the-Counter Hearing Devices Act. In simple terms, this opens up a new world of possibilities as it will eventually mean that companies will be able to produce an over-the-counter hearing device for people with a hearing loss and they won't need to have a hearing test, they won't need to have their ears examined, they won't even need to have a fitting appointment. They'll be able to self-fit these devices. So far, the entire act hasn't been written, but we do know that over-the-counter devices will be made for people specifically with a mild to moderate hearing loss, and it won't be possible for companies to make over-the-counter devices for children or adults with a severe hearing loss or poorer. The FDA's last deadline to deliver the over-the-counter proposal was August 18th, 2020, so there has been a hold-up, and until that proposal is finalized, no one can actually release anything to the public. It can be worked on in the background, such as what we're talking about today, However, you won't find anything in the shops. It's no surprise that 12 months after the FDA released this announcement, Google started working on something called Project Wolverine. Now, of course, it's named after Wolverine from the X-Men, who had superhuman senses. From my understanding, the research is still in very early stages, and they're doing the same as any other hearing aid manufacturer, which is trying to isolate the speech of somebody when one is in a more crowded and complicated listening environment. And there's no guarantee that it will come to light. There are quite a few projects that Google have worked on in the past that haven't ended up working. The question is, will over-the-counter hearing devices be right for you? Now, my big concern is, unless you go and see an audiologist, they haven't looked in your ear, they haven't looked at the health of your ears, you haven't had a hearing test, so you don't know whether you've got a mild hearing loss, moderate hearing loss, severe hearing loss, or even profound. You don't know whether you've got normal hearing but a processing disorder. You don't even know whether it's a permanent hearing loss or a temporary hearing loss that could be remedied with medical intervention. So what happens then if you go and buy an over-the-counter device, program it yourself, set it up, do a hearing assessment on yourself to see if you can get it to work and then it's not the most appropriate device for you. It doesn't mean that hearing aids aren't right for you, it just means that you need a proper audiological assessment with an audiologist. Now the really exciting thing about this is that our industry is getting the attention of the big dogs and if Google are interested then it won't be long before Apple, Samsung and some of the other big tech firms are interested as well. And so it could be that with their R&D budgets we could be seeing even bigger changes in technology over the next few years. Am I overly concerned for the big six? Not really. They've been around for a long time, they've got a great ethos, and they're already working on the kind of things that Google are working on in the background. Anyone looking at joining the big six would be pretty naive to think that they can just join the world of hearing aids and beat all the tech that's already out there overnight. So they better be up for a bit of a fight on their hands. Now, of course, back in 2017, when all of this came about, I was pretty concerned because I was thinking, where do we fit into all of this? However, having had chance to reflect and think about where we could potentially fit into it in the future, actually, I'm thinking it's a really exciting time. 
There are one in six people in the UK that have some form of hearing impairment. And in total, that makes about 6.7 million. So 6.7 million, of which 2 million people wear hearing aids. So that leaves 4.7 million people in the UK at the moment that don't wear a hearing aid that could benefit from wearing one. Does audiology need a shake up? No. Is one coming? Absolutely. And should audiologists be worried? I'd say maybe. Audiology isn't just about hearing aids. If you're an audiology practice that treats hearing aids now as a bit of an over-the-counter device, then of course, you're not gonna last very long. However, if you have a service-led, patient-driven approach, then you're like me, and I'm excited about the awareness that over-the-counter devices are going to bring to the world of audiology. In the long run, those patients will still end up coming to the practice and will have a greater shot at being able to help those 4.7 million people that we can't at the moment, that we don't have access to. And at the same time, this may contribute to a destigmatizing of hearing aids in the long run as well. That's it from me for today, guys. So if you like this video, then go ahead and click like. If you have any comments, please make sure you drop them in the box below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. I'll see you in the next video.